So, what's so special about a 45 degree bank turn? You probably know that a 45 degree bank turn is a required maneuver on glider check rides. For both private and commercial, the pilot must perform this maneuver and be able to maintain it within 5 degrees of bank without an attitude indicator. Why is this? Is the 45 degree bank just an arbitrary point between level and knife edge bank angles? The answer is, of course not. Let's take a look at the dynamics of turning performance and see if the 45 degree bank is really anything special. Let's start our journey with the plot of G load against bank angle. You've seen this before. It's in all the learn to fly books. Now let's look at what other parameters are affected. As we increase the g-load, the glider is going to sink faster. Well, it's heavier. In this chart, we can see that the increase in sink rate goes up faster than the g-load. At 45 degrees, the g-load has gone up about 40%, but the sink rate has increased 68%. Bank another 15 degrees to 60 degrees, and it's at 2 g's with a sink rate increase of over 180%. That can't be good. So we'll clearly see that increased bank angle and g-load starts to be pretty costly in terms of performance. The heavier weight due to g-load also increases the stall, minimum sink, and best glide speeds, but at a lower rate than the g-load increase. In fact, it's at the square root of the g-load. So at 30 degrees, those speeds increase about 8%. At 45 degrees, it increased almost 20%, and at 60 degrees, over 40%. Yeah, that's going to require you go a lot faster. Now, of course, the good news is that higher bank angles generate smaller radius turns, and we definitely want that to stay within the confines of a thermal or to make a small radius turn back to the runway in case of a low altitude rope break. Now let's look how turn radius plots against these other factors. So we can see here that the 45 degree bank gives us the least altitude loss in a turn. The difference between that and 40 or 50 degrees is minimal, which relates back to the check right performance standards of 5 degrees very nicely. However, at 40 degrees, the turn will be wider, making your turn back a little bit wider, requiring more turn. And at 50 degrees, your stall and minimum sink speed go up another 5% toward a 25% increase, so you'll have to get that speed by trading some precious altitude. Now we also know another factor that happens when we start turning sharply. We get into the undesirable aspects of a turn. These are adverse yaw, due to aileron deflection, diving tendency, due to the need to pull back for increased g-load, increased stall speed, because of the increased g-load, and the last two due to the degree that the outer wing is going faster than the inner wing. The overbanking tendency, as that wing generates more lift, and the yaw against the direction of turn, as that outer wing has more parasite drag. These of course require some stick input away from the direction of turn and rudder input toward the direction of turn to keep the bank constant and the yaw string centered. So, how much difference is there, and how does the bank angle affect this behavior? At large diameter circles, the wingspan is a small percentage of the turn's diameter, and the corresponding circumference each wing carves out in the same amount of time. As the circle becomes smaller, the difference in the circumference each wing flies becomes larger. But, because we bank, the effective distance also decreases with bank angle, so to mitigate that effect somewhat. Can you guess at what bank angle this effect is the largest? If you guess 45, you're right on the money. In this chart, we can see that the actual speed difference between the wingtips peaks at about 55 degrees. But the percentage difference between them peaks at 45, no matter what the speed or the wing length. Now, this effect is most pronounced with long wing lengths and slow speeds, as you might guess which is why most airplane pilots don't find this to be a factor in the higher speed, shallower bank turns with shorter wings that they experience. So now we know that a 45 degree bank turn can come in pretty handy, and it would be nice to be able to fly it precisely. Here's a couple ways to do that. You can form an imaginary line connecting the mounting screws in any flight instrument. 
they're offset by 45 degrees. Now just make that line parallel to the horizon. Some gliders, like this discus, have an angle built into the glare shield that's close to 45 degrees. Just line that up. Or you could create your own method, like this YouTuber who tapes straws to his canopy. I've made a spreadsheet where you can more closely inspect all of these parameters and even insert your own glider specs. You can access it on my website, thesoaringpage.com. I hope you found this interesting. Please like and subscribe. Safe soaring, and thanks for watching.